Uh -huh. Oh, refresh. It's Cosby Live time. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go. go Come on, the internet. Things. Internet. You want to have videos? Is there... Oh, there no, no video. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Nailed it. All right. Oh. Well. <laughs> oh, man. You need to Got that dinner. on the audio. <laughs> God damn. West Dead's with us. Come on, West Dead. Be stoked to see him again to the old Classico GPs. Yeah. Bringing the Tala with you. Ooh, the Tala's. Big fan, big fan. Let's see. Do I have all the things here, Dirk? I think we're a little light. There we go. That's it's freezing in the office, man. That's too much. <laughs> it's too much. I can't see our Odalay. There we go. Okay. We're actually pretty close. Does it feel like we're halfway decent on this thing, or do I need to go a little. Yeah. Like this, a scotch? Let's see what that does. People don't oh, need yeah, to see me face. anymore. Well, I'll wait for it. Did I do a good job? Let's see where what, such a delay. It's like a thirty this. minute thirty minute delay. Oh man. Jesse Billings has joined. Salutations, Jesse. It's a good friend of mine. Nice. Mike Gonzalez is here. Lee Sarah Bantai hanging out with Brian Williams. Alright, we got some peeps on here. Seven of them. Oh, Christopher <laughs> Johnson hanging out with us. Like we got, we're getting coast to coast around this thing. Well, seven people on here just in the first couple of minutes. I think people are starting to remember that we exist. Yeah. Just Burry. Seven episodes in. <laughs> <laughs> is it seven? No. It's, it's almost. <laughs> this is number seven. Is it six? I think it's number seven. Right, because you got... Uh, oh, this is seven. You got the recap, right? Season recap in December. Yeah. Woo! Seven episodes in. Nice. Nice. My math is We're right. almost indicated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All righty. Well, get out of here. Okay. So, why don't we just make this thing a smidge larger here, Dirk, so we can see what the heck's going on. What do you think about that? How's that grab you? That. <laughs> That's what my dad always says. All right, we got Spencer Russell in here. Good to see you, Spence. That kid had a, a good weekend. This is yeah. last weekend. Got P4. Nice job, Spence. Eight people hanging out. Luis Calderon looked real good at the Iron Man until those pits got him. It's a little bit too hot. Hey, Luis, I forgot to tell you. Um, you know, I say Luis or Luis back and forth on a regular basis. Yeah. So, well, that's pretty and forth. response to both. So. <laughs> uh, even Miles Calvin once put in the fence, Lewis. So there it is. Oh yeah. So I you got a hey, good company, bud. Uh, why don't we? I uh, want to get rolling this thing nice and slow. Like um, obviously, uh, Cal Speed Live here for the month of June. Uh, thanks you guys for hanging out with us. Uh, what are we gonna do? We're gonna talk about all kinds of things. Uh, first, we're gonna say hi to Brian Armbrist. Oh wow! Good to see that name up there, yeah. Brian Armbrist. Hopefully, it's going to be making the flight over here for Cal Classico GP. No, he's not. I doubt it. I, doubt, <laughs> I highly doubt it. But I'd love to see an armbrist on the entry list at Classico. Uh, let's see. Max Demoss is here. Lucas Shimadoc. Becky Smith is here. Ayrton Demoss. It's like all the Demosses are hanging out with each other at the same time. Sitting in different corners yeah, of the room. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> two, two different phones. All right, guys. we got 15 people hanging out. Uh, that's pretty damn good for out of the gate. Yeah. As it dropped to 13 immediately. 12 oh, now. It's going the right direction. All right. They're like, hurry up. Here we no, go. Also, the moss is dropping out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. Uh, so, anyways, it is Cal Speed Live. We are going to be doing a recap of the month of June here because we're damn near done with it. Mm. And we're going to preview July. Uh, as you can tell, our focus this month is. Scusa is Super Carts USA. Uh, they were just here for the Pro Kart doubleheader. Their rounds number two and three for their championship. Uh, they were also here back in March, the beginning of March, for the Winter Nats, uh, the Pro Tour. Um, and this, so again, this month's focus is those guys. And actually, for those of you who don't know, uh, maybe some of the arriving drive guys, a lot of the classes at LAKC are actually Scusa classes. Um, so what's pretty cool about that is you'll see a lot of people. A lot of uh, drivers cutting their teeth 
uh, at say an LAKC before they move to a pro car or a pro tour, that kind of deal. Um, and Scusa also uh, puts on one of the biggest uh, karting races of the year, right. uh, the Super Nats, which is in Vegas. Um, actually, the Machismo 12 hour that we have at the end of our year here uh, actually had its home at the, the Super Nats for a couple of years uh, in 2008 and 2009. Um, so that's a, a little bit of history for those of you guys who didn't know. Um, but again, Scusa is the, uh, the, the spotlight for this one. Uh, thanks to those guys for the apparel. Um, and uh, if you guys want more information uh, on Scusa, uh, Supercarts USA, you can actually go to supercartsusa.com. Uh, and check that out. Um, again, uh, thanks to those guys for the apparel and obviously for coming out here for both Pro Tour this year, the Winter Nets and Pro Cart. Yeah. We've been doing Pro Cart here for a few years now. So, Third year, uh, I think. Yeah, yeah, thanks to those guys. Um, moving on, we've got uh, quite a bit to talk about as we usually do. We try to keep this thing fairly tight into a uh, hour's period of time, but we'll do our best. Um, Quick reminder though, before we get into too much uh, about, of course, our big event this year, the Classical Grand Prix Weekend, which is gonna be coming up in the second weekend of August, August 10 and 11. Um, we've been talking to you guys about some of the special stuff we're gonna be doing for Classical GP. One of those things being uh, live event coverage. Uh, what we're gonna be doing this year, kind of something a little bit different. I'm not sure if they do any more because I'm a little bit out of touch, but it used to be that you could go to like the, the Daytona 24 hour or Le Mans, and they would have these onboards for these different teams, and you could click on that and kind of watch those uh, those teams from the from the cockpit. Uh. We're going to do something similar, where we're going to have our GoPro that we have. We got one of the GoPro sevens, and we're actually going to live stream that every single time or every single uh, race that we can. It's going to take a little bit of time to move it from person to person, and we'll try to set those things up in advance. But on the event page that we have set up at Cla or at uh, uh, CalSpeedCarding.com. If you look at the event page, you're going to eventually see links to official drivers that we're going to be looking at. If you have your own uh, live stream capability, uh, GoPro, or I know there's some other ones that have uh, like the, what do you call it? The yeah. 360 cameras, oh, yeah. this kind of thing. There's a few that have the ability to live stream. If you guys would like uh, to do that during the Classical GP, let us know and we can add you to the list so people can follow. I know, uh, for instance, um, Oh gosh, Ivan uh, Martinez, he's got a live stream capability. Uh, I oh, know Patrick right. Britton has got that same capability. So if you guys are like, hey, I'm gonna do the same thing, we can have links to your YouTube account or what have you on that page as we go into that event. So just a shout out to you guys. If you have the ability to go live stream, oh, uh, Michael uh, Gonzalez, another driver, I think has done that before. So let us know, we'll add you to the list uh, and uh, just, more and more coverage that we're gonna be having during that Classical GP weekend, so it should be pretty damn cool. Um, but like I said, lots to cover, so let's uh, jump right into the recap side of things. Sprint Series, round number six, kicked yeah. things off at the beginning of the month, um, and actually this entire month has been kind of one main theme, and that's been first time winners, uh, first time podiums, first time everything. Yeah. Um, and, excuse me, those guys kicked things off right away with a first time, um, pole position and that went to Adrian Jones. Uh, now one of the interesting things about the sprint series was actually they were not on the technical course that the rest of everybody was on. They were on the temp course. Right. Yeah, the temp course was actually uh, put in place so that they wouldn't be on the same course twice. The way the track uh, layouts lined up, it was actually uh, technical for about a month and a half. And then after that, we switched uh, to Grande Counter, which we're on currently. So we didn't have the arrive and drive guys on the same car, or excuse me, the same track twice. We went to this temp course, which is basically short beach that we use at Grande Counter and Technico the rest of the way. Um, we ran into it no, kind of knowing what it was going to be like because right. we had done this before, slightly different with the old Sunset Corner and the, the shortest of beaches, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Sarah, uh, Sarah Beach Corner, as Sean Fight likes to uh, coin it. Sarah loves that. Um, I can hear yeah. it right now. Uh, but uh, hey, from from my standpoint, actually, I thought the racing was really good. It kind of has more of an old school indoor feel because it's as tight as it is. Only 42, 43 second laps, so it was, it was quick. I was actually really surprised, and uh, we'll get more into Super Series later, but the first few laps of the AMA for Super Series are actually really good. Um, mm. It's it's still, track's still 30 feet wide and all that, but 
it's you still have one corner right after the next and the racing it's kind of you really got to you can still develop passes in a timely manner but mm -hmm. I think majority of them are a little bit more late moves and whatnot yeah regardless for a sprint series crowd it was still a really good uh, race that we had for for all the uh, main events and it actually worked out really good I was surprised to see how clean people were able to get around the track and whatnot yeah despite that still a decent amount of lap traffic throughout the day mm -hmm. is sprint series crowd there was some people still trying to figure things out right. but the track is a hell of a lot of fun to race on that's yeah. for sure yeah it's like you said it's 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 quick it's fun to race on um, you can still make passes and stuff like that happen but it's it's tight you yeah know? it's it may be 30 feet wide but things happen so quick right uh, things develop uh, even quicker um, and like I said, Adrian Jones scored his first career pole position. It was pretty damn cool to see him. Um, and then uh, out front for the heat races was Ayrton DeMoss, who we talked about earlier, hanging out with us. Right. Uh, Evan Lawrence doing the same. And then young Donnie Clark was actually able to pick up a heat race as well. Um, and then when we, got to the, uh, when we got to the A main, it wasn't too big of a surprise to see the, you know, the core drivers, the guys who have been at the sharp end yeah. most of the year, out front again. Um, and actually, it was uh, a serious point leader and recently crowned Winter Series champ in the Sprint Series who moved into the second spot, um, but he wasn't able to find enough to beat Donnie Clark, who yeah. was able to pick up his very first Sprint Series when he's been close before. I think he got a second either this year or last year, Donnie Clark did. He uh, was able to actually pick up the win. And uh, Evan Lawrence, who was having a, a phenomenal day, uh, he ended up third. Uh, one interesting uh, fact to point out, second place for Redmond, his fourth in a row. In his a row, yeah. fourth second place finish in a row for Tyler Redmond, who ironically ended up doing it again this last weekend. Yeah. So and, and, uh, Tyler Redmond's really used to P2. I'm sure he's going to be wanting a little bit more than that. There uh, are worse things he can be used to. Though, man, yeah, he's a lot of hard work for Tyler Redmond and actually a pretty solid point lead at this point as yeah. well, being as consistent as he has been. So. Tyler Redmond, P2, Evan Lawrence, third, but first career win for uh, Donnie Clark, which is pretty damn cool, especially when we found out afterwards he was going to miss the next two rounds because right. uh, of that uh, bit of surgery he's got to have. But, but he'll be uh, back in uh, round nine, I think. Like, Tyler's one of the guys we expect to see up there, obviously leading the points, but right. he's been the most consi uh, consistent. Evan's actually had a few runs with the, uh, the top three, top five uh, lately. Um, he's been really he's, breaking out lately. He's pulled, his, he's pulled himself together, got his pace right. The uh, the first few runs up with him up front were, honestly, first time for a driver run up front. Mm -hmm. Few mistakes, ended up falling back, but didn't make those same mistakes this last round, was able to hold on to the top three. Yeah. Um, and Donnie's just had enough experience. I think it was him really putting the day together and not getting himself in a bad scenario on course where he was able to stay up front as well. Yeah. So... Tyler still being the guy to beat, but it was really cool seeing Donnie um, get his win finally, and Evan finally landing the podium he's been trying for for the last few rounds. Yeah, like you said about Donnie, too. Actually, I talked about him in the preview, and it was like, he's been so close, and he's had yeah. either, like you said, either mistakes or maybe a dumb mistake, like weight or whatever. Yeah, um, oh, man. But he's been right in there, and yeah, it was a long time coming for him. Uh, really cool to see him get it done. Um, like we said, Donnie Clark, first career win sprint series. That was pretty damn cool. Uh, before we carry on, though, a couple people I want to shout out at. We see uh, Derek Zimmerman jumping on here. That's a guy who I want to race with again. If he wasn't so damn small. Oh, man. If, uh, Zimmerman... Have him going to the Masters. I don't need anyone else to <laughs> see not... here. <laughs> I'd love to Jesus. race with him, but uh, he's yeah. tiny. He's tiny. You need to go to McDonald's more or something there, Zim. <laughs> Brian Mossman on here. His kid, Frankie's having a, a decent year as well. Yeah. Uh, Alejo Fernandez. That's someone I have not uh, I've not seen that name in a long time. Uh, it'd be good to see him come out here and play. Trisha Thibodeau from Tri-C's on here. We'll actually be uh, Spotlight uh, Tri-C Carters next month. So make sure you guys check out that. Mike Casino, I know, from uh, back east. He is a VLK regular. He used to work there. Uh, well, at least it used to be regular. I think he does a lot of autocross these days, Mike Casino does. So, good to see some different and uh, new faces on here. As we roll on through, the next thing that happened for June was the Pro Kart doubleheader. Um, obviously, like we said, Scusa is the focus this uh, this month. Um, it, is the, it was the second weekend in June, and it was all Scusa. They had rounds two and three of their championship. The Friday practice followed by rounds two on Saturday and round three on Sunday. And basically their program being a, a practice, a qualifying, a pre-final, and a main. That is what uh, Scusa does for their deal. 
and it was a pretty damn warm weekend. I mean, it it was I want to say real close, if not actually in triple digits. That I think it was hovering right around a hundred, if not just below it Especially all weekend. Especially on Sunday, yeah. Yeah, I mean, picks uh, figures it's the the three day event that's gonna have the hottest weekend that right. month, you know. But and it's it's one thing to to race in the hot weather. And it's one thing to have one day of practice in the hot weather, but when you got three days of racing, it's that much more energy burning and whatnot. It's it was tough conditions, especially with how the uh, the track came into play and how much grip there was. Oh you man, know? yeah, you, and actually you can still see it now. We were actually yeah. talking about it today. <laughs> uh, we had part. to run over to uh, the Rock Oxnard to pick up some berries and whatnot, and we were just talking about how much rubber there's still on the on the track. There's stacks of it in certain spots. So much rubber, probably the most I've ever seen during that weekend. So we have the, uh, now we have Grandi Counter in place for uh, mm -hmm. this month's circuit, but, or excuse me, July is coming, but um, uh, they were on Technico and our sport carts still go through that first S, we now right. call Short Beach. And we've had a good two weekends on that, that, uh, that corner now, and there's still rubber laid down from Pro Kart. Also, you still see the uh, the technical hairpin, all the rubber is there. That's going to be there for a while. We're not going to be driving on that anytime right. soon. And then also the sweeper going through the center of the course. Um, they, there's just a dark ribbon going across. So if you stand <laughs> yeah. up top, you'll still see all that rubber. Yeah, it's crazy. And uh, Mike had a chance that he was able to race in a pro kart this, uh, this last month. But, I mean, what was your thoughts on how the... Tr track progressed and where it ended up and all of that well i think we just said there about it being you know, how it progressed mm -hmm. you know with the, the grip that we had on friday while it laid down pretty good it just kept getting grippier and grippier and grippier and what i was talking to people is on saturday it was stuck like there was a lot of grip on saturday um and you, you kind of had to back things up a little bit but it was consistent you know where you were going you knew where it was going to be and it was it was just grippy right on Sunday, it just kept laying it down. And I remember uh, my run group, uh, KA Masters, was a bit earlier in the, in the schedule. Yeah. So the track was one way then. Well, you had all the, the big shoes, you know, pretty much after that. And when I went out for morning warm up on Sunday, it was black, like yeah. really black. And I'm like, holy crap. And it's crap. not a traditional morning warm up, there's grip. Right. You're able yeah. to go drive it pretty hard right so We away. went through the S's and like on top of the curb was black and also the kinds of stuff, Contino, yeah. the concrete corner was black. But what the, the interesting thing was is that there was so much grip, actually they, it felt like you would be moving on top of the surface a little bit. I remember you mentioned At least that. with the KAs where we're using the blue tire, the, uh, the harder of the two tires. It sits on top of the surface a yeah, little more. Yeah, yeah. You've got the Avinco blue and you've got the Avinco red. And uh, the red, the, the shifters, the X30s, those guys are using, they're laying down a bunch of that grip. But the blue, we kind of would sit on top. And actually, the first lap or two, we would pick up rubber. Oh, so wow. you go on the on the out lap just and even lap one, enough, yeah. yeah. And we don't have heat in the tires yet, so for the first couple of laps, you're just flinging rubber off your tires. You're just cleaning them off. So that was pretty damn crazy, as far as the yeah, you got a lot of grip. But then on Sunday, it went. It wasn't greasy. It was right. just like you felt like you're kind of on top, and it would just move. Like if you missed the corner. So yeah. Anyway, track conditions, grip level, pretty nuts that weekend. Um, certainly a challenge for both the drivers and the tuners alike trying yeah. to figure out how to get around all that Stay kind of stuff of um and the guys i was talking to in the paddock said it was like i said it was a challenging weekend um but uh like we talking about uh kind of a month of firsts um a couple of firsts that i know of anyway uh, one was uh billy musgrave picking up both the x30 senior win and the pro shifter win in the same weekend uh, in the pro kart series i know that he's been uh like pushing for that for a while and i saw his facebook post that he finally was able to win both of those in the same weekend. That was a pretty big deal for him. Billy will tell you he's not a tag driver. <laughs> and he's he's gone in, he's always been competitive, but man, he's had some bad things come his way, whether it's on track incident or equipment failure, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. But man, he had the Mad Croc and to his credit, brand new chassis. He's had some uh experience with the tag uh chassis before, mm -hmm. but between that and the um excuse me, the shifter chassis. He's had to kind of develop both quickly, I think, from looking outside in. But man, he had the tag card on rails. He was the guy to beat all weekend. Man. He'd get out front and just sit there. And um, he actually had the uh, the shifter class covered, it mm -hmm. looked like. But I went to talk French to him. was close though. I think French got him on qualifying on Sunday. Oh, but, yeah. but yeah. Uh, French ended up qualifying. Jake French, yeah. But, um, and Bolt, another mad car driver, but Billy ended up staying in front for the, uh, the pre-final in the main. But it was funny, I go up to talk to Billy 
on the Saturday podium. I was like, dude, the tag's easy to drive. He's like, man, the shifter's kicking my ass right now. But he was still able to keep it out front. Right. But it was, no, it was good to see him have a successful weekend in the X30 class. He didn't have as good as luck on Sunday with the main event. Right. Actually, some contact on the start ended up forcing him and another uh, front runner, Christian Brooks, off the track. Brooks ended up being able to keep rolling. Uh, Billy, it sounded like he had a, a chassis issue after the contact. He had to pull off. Yeah. But despite that, still a, a good driver to um, to have that success come his way this week. Yeah, it was it was definitely one of those things where was like, you got a guy who was really trying to find you know, a way to put those two things together. And it's really cool. Anytime you find somebody like, they're really striving for something and they, they achieve it, it's yeah. pretty cool to watch. Um, and Billy was able to do that, like we said, with his win on Saturday uh, in both classes. He was able to make that happen. On Sunday, as you say, in the X30 main, it did not go Billy's way, however, with that turn one contact. Um, he went out, Brooks got, uh, uh, he went towards the back, or I'm not sure how far back, but Brooks went backwards, mm -hmm. excuse me, and Ryan Norberg also went backwards. This gave a few other drivers maybe an opportunity that maybe they didn't have, because those guys kind of controlled the front yeah. for a good chunk of the, the weekend. Uh, and you ended up having, uh, I think, uh, I thought I saw Joseph Dinelli up there, um, I know Hannah Greenmeyer was up there, mm -hmm. and it was actually uh, Hannah Greenmeyer who ended up picking up her first win in the series, if I read correctly, uh, right. for Pro Kart in the senior category. Um, Hannah won, and Ryan Norberg actually came from pretty deep. Uh, I want to say 10th or 11th after that first turn schmazzle, yeah. and, and ended up catching the leaders right before the end. Excuse me, and then ended up right on Hannah's heels at the end. So it was a one-two for RPG. And you know what? It's it was crazy. I forgot who I was talking to, but Hannah Greenmeyer, I think, was around the top five, if not a tick further back throughout the uh, the whole weekend. Despite that, that's where she kind of sat. I think most of the weekend, but the field was still close enough that when she got out front, no one was able to just run her down. All right. Norberg has his step together. He's obviously the top uh, tag driver in the country right now. He's he should be the guy to figure it out and catch people up front. But man, it, like to see Hannah stay out front and you know Dinelli, the rest of those guys, those guys right there, shows just how tight the field is. If those fifth to eighth place drivers are out front and can sit there, mm -hmm. you and know? we're talking about really good drivers. Yeah, like no. I just said, just Joseph Dinelli, he's been out in the national tour for a while. He's a yeah. good ass driver, and we're just seeing how close. And also the track, right. the track is tough mm -hmm. uh, all weekend is. It's got a few passing zones, but it is a, a tough one. No, and I mean, I got a chance to drive it on uh, on Monday. And Vico did a uh, MG did a tire test the following Monday. Right. Um, I got to hump, hop out on track in Mike's KA, and I've never been exposed to a, a track like that with that, that much grip, that much grip, and seeing how the line developed and whatnot. But you could almost let go of the wheel and just do the pedals, and the cart's going to drive itself. <laughs> like the like rubber will kind of pull you around. Yeah. Uh, but. Man, the off track stuff is just mean. Oh, if you get or off track, off line. If you yeah. get a tick off the line, ton of marbles, and it's the way I've kind of described Technico. It's a roller coaster. Mm. You got one way around to get the uh, to get around the joint, and the uh, the passing is going to be really tough. So I think you just nailed it. Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot of grip. There's a lot of rubber laid down mm -hmm. on the line. Yeah. If you're not on the line, it's going to be it's going to be sketch. To do some it's going to be sketch, and that's probably the biggest reason why passing was a little bit tougher you yeah. did try to go for it and it, if you got it wrong or you know even if you got it right it was going to be a tough ask anyway and and fortunately for this kind of circuit there are some there's not a ton of opportunities so the chances you might have to take you might not be the biggest fan of sure unlike this month's circuit grande where there's so many opportunities right you don't have to make the high risk low reward move you know right, right. and when we're talking about you know, going for championships and stuff like that, where it was rounds two and three of six, right? It's, yeah. There's still a lot to play for. You don't want to get too crazy about those uh, those opportunities. Right. Um, so aside from those first, like you got uh, uh, Billy getting his first, you know, double on that. You've got uh, Hannah Greenmeyer getting her first uh, series win. Um, there was also some people who just flat out dominated. Right. Um, just a shout out to those guys, uh, uh, Brett Harrelson and X30 Masters. He's actually just started doing the X30 thing because he was a shifter guy. Yeah, and he's killing it in X30 Masters. He's doing awesome. Uh, I think it was actually his debut weekend, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Uh, Jesus Vasquez Jr. and Manny Swift. That kid's on rails right now. This has been his year. Man, oh man, making uh, progress. He's, he's killing it. 
Uh, and then Josh Pearson and uh, K.A. Jr. Just flat out the kid to beat. Yeah. Period. I actually think he picked up a, a X30 Jr. win as well. I think so. But those drivers right the there double. just put it down. It was it was awesome. Uh, it was awesome to uh, to see those guys kill it. Um, and, and again, for for me, I'm a little biased because I like to see people from Cal Speed do well. Yeah, you know, 100%. Pearson Pearson's not. I love seeing uh, Vasquez do well here and elsewhere. Obviously, Harrelson's been doing well in the shifter, um, and uh, it's cool to see those guys do well, do well elsewhere. Um, and uh, yeah, pretty yeah. damn cool uh, to see that people just flat out knock it out of the park. We were talking about it before we started the live feed, but kudos to Brett. He like we see him out here. A ton of Wednesdays, a ton of Fridays. Yeah, putting uh, time I, in. He's putting the right time in and it's showing off. Um, it's paying off. Hopefully he can keep that progression up the rest of the year and have a good run at Super Nats because I know that's what he really works towards. Yeah, So I'm um, getting called to Brett and uh, ACU's Vasquez. We, we said it last Man. month, and again, he's just progressed so much in these last few years, and he's been showing it. So kudos to those drivers yeah the kid is killing it for sure uh before we move on to our next event again a few more shout outs here our good buddy josh huff from san diego he is hanging there out with go. us uh i know he'll be here this weekend um huffy obviously does uh, everything from from 206 stuff all the way on up uh, so check out josh huff uh, josh huff motorsports uh out of uh, san diego uh robert perez a fellow ka masters guy he's hanging out with us uh, hopefully we'll see him here in a couple weekends, yeah. or if not this weekend, Robert oh, right. Robert Perez <laughs> maybe come out this weekend. Uh, my good buddy Tom Stone is hanging out with us. Todd Lewis, Todd Lewis from uh, Texas now, hanging out. Randy Lemons, uh, Brian Williams, who was that kid? <laughs> Brian Williams, Brian Brian Williams gave me a shout out, and you just you just leave the room. That's it's messed up. <laughs> That's why you left nice. Brian, I uh, appreciate that. Yeah, I had a I had a pretty good weekend myself. Uh, appreciate that, Brian. It was uh, it was a good weekend for me. It was my first uh, foray into the pro kart deal, and it, yeah, it went pretty well. Tony Leon from uh, Supercarts USA on here as well. Tony, thanks again for the apparel. Uh, uh, Supercarts is our uh, focus of the month, and you can see the Switzerland flags <laughs> flying there. He knows that I always try to play non-favorites, and I appreciate that. Rolling on through, the next thing we have on the docket, Competition Karting uh, did a second uh, weekend in a row. It would be the third weekend of the month, and that was Tri-C round number four. And this time, those guys actually had a track change. So we had just finished Pro Kart with, excuse me, with uh, Technico. Tri-C Karters, they would end up getting a, a track change, and they would be on the Grande counterclockwise right. uh, uh, layout, which was extremely interesting because firstly, we were surprised not to have any threat of weather, which seems oh, to follow man. around tri <laughs> yeah. ridiculously. Uh, but no, it was all good weather-wise. It was going to be fine that way. The interesting part was, um, like you said about, you can see the black of the ribbon of, of rubber yeah. from Pro Kart. You had those really grippy areas, right? The whole top part of the circuit that we were still using from the uh, counterclockwise stuff from Technico. Right. That was all there, but Long Beach wasn't used. Horseshoe, Horseshoe wasn't yeah. used. Silk. Uh, silk wasn't used. And, and actually, and entry the entry to hairpin. To hairpin yeah. yeah. And into that point, the entry to hairpin. Well, the entry to Contino. Oh, right. Because of how the rubber worked, the entry also, if you so took a sweepy line, it didn't work. <laughs> If you went diamond, it actually worked pretty damn good. So thank God it was all the fastest corners on the track that, <laughs> that we hadn't right, touched right. yet. Yeah, let you go through. Uh, you go through horseshoe, and the first part's got some grip. You cut in center, it gives up, and at the end it goes ahead. Yeah, and it cuts <laughs> yeah. right on the uh, on the Technico exit of the hairpin. And that was actually pretty neat because you'd go from slick portions of the track or more right. free, but you'd go. You could actually throw it pretty hard in the carousel. They said you'd feel it catch and then you'd yeah, pay off for it. No, hundred percent. You know? So it was interesting to, to kind of feel the differences there. I got a chance to drive a two oh six and a KA on uh, on Friday, a Friday testing or Friday practice for for K or for uh, Tri C. I think you got a chance to run the KA a little bit that day. Yeah. Um, so it was really interesting where that grip was and where it wasn't. The drivers had a hell of a test to to try to figure that out. But uh, um, besides that, man, I'll tell you what. Racing was badass, dude. It was yeah. freaking fun to watch, man. I, I I'll tell you what. I we're obviously focused with the CSK Racing Group. We're focused with you know the 206 stuff and the KA yeah. stuff. And 
by all means, if anybody's watching who was here or whatever, throw it out there. Um, if there's any other good races or whatever that you saw. Dude, yeah. absolutely. Uh, but I'll tell you right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on three of them. Right. And, yeah, they were all the ones that we were paying attention to. Yeah. But 206 Senior, it was uh, it was Dakota Tate and Riley Dugan. Yeah. Right? Those guys pretty much had everybody covered. There was Battle Royale going on behind them and some great racing going on. But those two guys pretty much had it covered. I think Riley had one heat win. And Dakota had the other one. I believe so. I think it was yeah. Dakota had the second one. Uh, but then it came down to the end. And again, Tate and Dugan. And it came down to the very last complex. Well, and to before you say that, what was funny was we're watching the race. And I believe we see Dugan out front and Tate further back. And then two laps go by. And we're watching our guys battle for a third. And then we look back to the front. Oh, shit, what happened? And it's <laughs> Tate back in front of Dugan. Right. At this point, he caught and passed him. And yeah, coming up to the final corner, uh, yeah, go ahead for this, <laughs> this well, last few seconds. Yeah, I mean, they came up session. here, and it was it was uh, Dugan out front, I believe, right? I think it was Dugan out front, Tate goes, Tate goes for, for the that, inside, and he gets it done, head. but he goes in a bit deep, and it was like the perfect over-under from Dugan, yeah. and he just clears him by the bus stop, badass move from, from Tate, great over-under, it was great racing between those two yeah. guys. That was a badass race to watch. Uh, for for me, I mean, probably the best week, uh, best race of the weekend was the two hundred six Masters guys. Dude. Now, to be fair, yeah. <laughs> it did end with the three CSK guys out front. We're talking about uh, uh, Jose De Silva, Lucas, Jimmy Doc, and Sean Bradley. But it was a badass race. Yeah, and not just the main, the heat races. I mean, even uh, further back, I want to say the first heat race had Jose De Silva on. Jasinski, I want to say, and made that that sweet maneuver going into uh, oh, the into bus three. stop. Yeah, yeah that yeah. was freaking sick. It was a badass move there. Uh, I'm saying badass, like that's freaking <laughs> awesome. Um, it was cool to see those guys get after it like that. Yeah, and uh, they continued on through the the heat race, second heat race, excuse me, and then in the main, it was a back and forth between Jose De Silva and Lucas Jimmy Doc. Uh, Lucas has won the last two races. Josie won the season opener and they're wet. Yeah. Um, and, and he's been close. He's been right there. He had a mistake a round or two ago. Two rounds ago. Round one. No, round was, ago. No, it was last, last round. round. Yeah. Uh, but not this time. Actually, uh, De Silva was awesome. The uh, the Masters group has gotten so aggressive. Uh, and I, you <laughs> yeah, know, like, have. And it's all good. They, they're they doing stuff uh, from our standpoint on the sidelines. You know, totally legal. Everyone's still racing, leaving each other room and whatnot. But man, it's. It's kind of neat because you're seeing them push the envelope a little bit more and more with each other. At the end of the day, it's still the older guys, you know, in a 206. So a lot of them are, it's their second or third year. So they're kind of like, all right, this is what we have. And this is what I know I can do. So they're right. starting to get more comfortable with their equipment and being around each other and whatnot. And we're seeing that happen more and more each round. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, the master's class is a ton of fun to watch for 206. Yeah. Uh, and to lead into the other uh, senior citizen group is the, the KA Masters group at Tri-C. <laughs> yeah. Those guys are a, a great group to watch as well. It's a pretty deep field. Yeah. Especially this last round, we saw a few um, a few other guys come out that are, aren't regulars uh, as much. Paul Bonilla obviously does a lot of Tri-C. Haven't, haven't seen him as much lately this year. Uh, Brian Phillipson was able to come and jump out too. We haven't seen him in a go-kart in a while. Mm -hmm. And then also Tim Meyer. Tim Meyer, another uh, another hundred CC guy that does some uh, X thirty Masters. Yeah, and and the show that Benia and Meyer put on in those heat races. Too, oh man, that was awesome. Yeah, we yeah. were talking about two cats who've got regular national race experience. Yeah, right? so like our guys that we're talking about two hundred six Masters. Yeah, it's Masters and whatnot, but they're fairly new to the game. Right. These two cats, Benia and Meyer, they've been doing this they've thing for around. a while, <laughs> and they've you know run over Europe, all, all sorts of the kind of stuff couple of badass shoes and just duking it out and it was a hell of a lot of fun to watch they pretty much had the um the heat races covered right. um, do, um excuse me phillipson and uh Benilla. further back uh perez unfortunately <laughs> got a, a 10 grid spot penalty <laughs> so he had to start from the further back of being i think day. he did on purpose <laughs> yeah there there more fun. <laughs> can't really blame him that did look like fun but yeah, a good time. he eventually made his way up was uh there in the uh we'll get to the main event but um him, our, uh, our own CSK driver, Mark Connell, was in the top five most right. of the day, as well as, um, who else am I missing? 
Steve Mark. Jasinski. Jasinski, thank you. Yeah, he's right in there, baby. Guy. <laughs> it was it was an awesome show. So all those guys putting on a hell of a show. Um, I got to give a little bit of a shout out to our guy Mark Connell. Um, he ended up having to leave early. Yeah, because of a flight deal, and it was what it was. Hope you had a great time in Hawaii, Mark. Hope it was a blast. But you know, uh, what's funny was uh, Dana Estes come up comes up to me during the um, this two hundred six senior race. He's like, so where'd Mark go? I'm like, oh, he had to catch up plane to Hawaii. He's like, oh, he's a smart one. He's like, <laughs> Dan's like, when you get paid to do this shit? He's like, oh, I want to go too. So, yeah, rough life, Mark yeah. Connell. He got a chance to go relax yeah. the last week or so in Hawaii. But yeah, did what he could. Didn't have enough time with the way the deal was rolling, so he had to cut out and go to go to the airport. Yeah. But K Master, still a great race to watch. Um, Robert Perez ended up getting the win in it. Yeah, and, and a huge shout out to Perez because yeah. to your point, he had the big grid spot penalty. He I think it was the was it the the drivers drivers meeting. meeting. Yeah, yeah. pinch yeah, Robert Perez. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So he'll make sure he doesn't do that again. Uh, but to go from to go from that pretty much in the back at the beginning of the day mm -hmm. and end up being the guy. I mean, I actually was on track for the main and I right. got a chance to see those guys duking it out. It was Perez and Benia up front challenging for that w and Perez came out on top i think Perez. i mean dude i'm a benia's got i don't know 30 years on me and i would still like be really stoked if i could go out and beat him he's still Absolutely. a wheel no matter what he Absolutely. drives so i think it was really cool for robert one of the local guys to go up against that national competition and, and take the fight to him and come out on top so Absolutely. and it was awesome racing between the two of them so yeah, for sure for sure good day at tri-c carters not at all not, not bad at all uh next up on our list is the iron man super series round number six that just happened uh this uh, this last weekend um and again like a uh, sprint would be back to the tent course um and like we talked about earlier really really quick lap 42 43 second yeah. laps we knew going in that traffic was going to be a big deal Mm -hmm. We got 30 go karts on course. Right. So traffic was going to be a thing. Uh, and we figured that we would see some alternate pit strategies. There's not a lot, at least out of the front runners, there's not a lot of early pitting going on. Right. Right. We will see that a little bit further down the, 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 the chain, but not from the usual suspects, if you will. Right. And this time, uh, actually, it was pretty, uh, pretty split between early and late. But I will say, yeah, okay, there's a lot of traffic, but everybody seemed to handle it pretty damn good. Yeah, and I think that was the nice part about the um, the Iron Man compared to what we saw later on in the Sprint Series. But traffic thins out. You're just cutting laps. There's a mm -hmm. lot less racing going on. Yeah. You're a little bit more accepting of getting. You're not going to be happy you get hung up for that one corner. Right. But you can accept it a little bit more. But, um, no, it was actually a really good race. And we, I mean, we test it, right? So we're always going to be testing the cars and the course and whatnot. So we'll do eight-hour day of testing. But I don't think that's going to add up to an hour straight of it. Right. Yeah, we'll do a five to seven lap, lap sprint. Yeah, those carts are going to change. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, seeing the way the track's going to change and just, it's a 43 second lap on an outdoor track. So it's going to be a little tiring at one point. Yeah. It looked like a ton of fun to drive though. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, like I said, the, the, everybody did a pretty damn good job with that, uh, the congestion, if you will, for lack of a better term. Everybody did pretty damn good there. Uh, we talked about the altering strategies, the early stops versus the the more traditional mid to late stop strategy. Right. And actually, the early strategy worked out for everybody who finished third through fifth. Um, huge shout out uh, to the kid who finished third, Sam Hunt. Yeah. Uh, he was actually he was he had some good early laps. Mm -hmm. Uh, was able to get into clean air, which is crucial with his early pit stop. I think he stopped on like lap six or seven. Yeah. Uh, he was able to get the clean air, stay in clean air, and cut fast laps. And when everything started to shake out, he found himself grabbing third place on the on the on the podium. He was able to snag another podium. I think his first since uh, his win in the season opener. Mm -hmm. So that was big for him. Uh, and uh, the two guys he was chasing were pretty far up the road. Uh, and that was second place, getting yet another second, Tyler, Tyler Redman. Redman. Uh, however, in this case, that was his first piece of hardware in the Iron Man series. So he'll right. take that second. It was pretty big for him. And as uh, somebody that he was right in the coattails of, mm -hmm. he stayed right with the guy who ended up winning. And that was the Winter Series champion and current Iron Man series point leader, Paulo Franco. Yeah. And you know what? It's funny to hear that Paulo's leading the points after how many penalties he's had in the pit. <laughs> Kids, blood, he's fast. Yeah, 
but I don't know. Stop boxes are as a kryptonite. Not anymore. He did get him right this last yes, round. Yes, he did. So I patrol the first box, and he comes up, takes his time. He definitely made sure. Yeah, made sure. Gives me two thumbs up. Goes on by. <laughs> came around a little bit later for a second stop. Did the same thing. Two thumbs up and went on by. Yeah. So now it, Paulo Franca is like you said, kryptonite. What have you? The thing that was holding him back was the pit lane, and it all had to do with like how he. He thought that he just had to have the front wheels behind the cones. Uh huh. <laughs> full cart. Anyway, he has been one of, if not the driver to beat in the Iron Man series. And this last weekend, he gets his very first series win in the Iron Man series. Uh, Paulo Franca, point leader overall, mm -hmm. Winter Series champ, and now finally can say Iron Man Series winner. So, big, big weekend uh, for him, a big day for him in the Iron Man series. Uh, the Super Series, once again, the first kept coming. Uh, when this time, again, we're talking about the Sprint Series having the, the first of the pole position, the winner, stuff like that. It was Ariel Rubio scoring his first career uh, pole position in the Super Series. Um, and honestly, it was it was more of first as when we got to the, to the, the mains. Right. Uh, real quick credit, though, Diego Morales and point leader in the Super Series, Sean Fight, uh, actually uh, swept their heat races so they actually mm -hmm. picked up both and that's that's tough to do yeah. now with the 10 man invert or 10 driver invert uh and also paulo franca and jose de silva also picked up heat race wins um but uh again like i said first time hardware winners uh it was what we saw on the mains this time in the c main it was max demos getting his first piece of hardware followed by his son ayrton demos yeah in the b main um, and actually, I was talking to Ayrton, uh, I want to say Wednesday, maybe, and he said that was the very first piece of karting hardware that they had picked up, right. was the C&B main. Now, I actually was joking with Max DeMoss. The reason why he was in the C main in the first place, forgot to do his chin strap yeah. on his helmet and got a, a, just a, a dumb DQ. I mean, that's what I would call a C-man mistake. <laughs> you know? Oh. But well, yeah. the good news is he was able to walk away with a piece of hardware, yeah. got himself a trophy. You pay, uh, you pay the same amount, but you got extra laps more in anyway. Yeah, so see, there you yeah go. exactly. You got <laughs> extra main out of it. Uh, I just hope that Ireton puts his B main win right next to Max's C main. Yeah, win. there see you go. Happens. Nice little fun rivalry between the uh, the father son duo there. Um, and then move on to the A main. Uh, it, we've talked about it many times with other feel good wins, right? Kind of crowd favorites. Uh, one of the first ones that I can think of. You know, maybe one of the biggest ones uh, in the in the paddock was when Taylor Hayes finally got his his win uh, in the Super Series yeah. and uh, and you know the Clasco win for him. Well, we had another feel good win this last weekend, um, and it was uh, Chris Huerta. Yeah, Chris Huerta has been the guy who has the, the best Super Series driver who's never been on the podium. Lots of fourth place finishes, mm -hmm. never on the podium. And this time he ends up skipping the first two steps, goes straight to first, ends up picking up the win. It was pretty pretty awesome to see Chris get that. Yeah, he's been working for it for a long time, and he's definitely made fun of himself, but <laughs> still really wanting to get that top spot. But it was a good race. Um, it was uh, him and Adam Nagal, uh, teammates, if you will, being able to work together, kind of break away and whatnot from uh, third place Diego Morales. Where he ended up having to hold off on one of the young guns, uh, Spencer Russell, right. to fight off for third. Yeah. But yeah, Chris and Adam broke out in front, did a little uh, teamwork, and uh, Chris was able to hold on a lead, snagging his first win. Not by much, though. No, he barely dozed out. Nigel yeah, by what? It was like 87 thousandths or something yeah. like that. It's nuts. So, <laughs> no, I've written, and that's a Robin drive right there. Really right. close racing, which is awesome. Yeah, for sure. Um, and the, yeah, kudos to uh, Spencer Russell for. Uh, taking the fight to Diego. Experience over youth is going to yeah. pay off. Diego nabs third and Spencer also with the fourth for him. Uh, so good job. Yeah, and a shout out to Diego too. We know the kid's going to be uh, to be missing some uh, some races. Uh, I think he's got he's missed two and yeah. Diego is going to actually miss one more actually next round I think. I think it's I think that's what he's already. Yeah, about. I think it's round seven. So Diego who is already, I want to say he's God, he's had a lot of podiums this year. Like all but one. Like he's done out of the six races we've done, he's done four. And I want to say three of those have been on the podium. Phenomenal year so far for Morales. But he will miss one more and he's out of drops. So the question is going to be how far down the charts is he going to be. Uh, phenomenal year for Morales right now, though. Yeah. So kudos to him. Uh, moving on, though, we are done with the recap 
part of the program. We're going to get on to the previews. Before we do that, quick shout out to John Perry hanging out on here. And then Aaron Scott. Oh, Aaron yeah. Scott's hanging out with us. Uh, good to see him on here. Aaron Scott is somebody that I want to see at uh, Classica GP Weekend as well. Former winner out here and a phenomenal shoe in his own right. Uh, previews this weekend. It is round number five for LAKC. Um, they're going to cap off the month of June on the Grande Counterclockwise layout. Uh, but this time we talked about the variance in grip mm. from the Tri-C weekend. This weekend it should be a bit more consistent. Uh, you would think at least because we've been on it now for about three or so weeks. Yeah. And with Friday, Saturday, and finally Sunday racing going, uh, should lay, some, lay down some rubber and be a lot more consistent in that regard. Um, it's going to be the first and only time the LAKC has been on the layout this year. Um, and, uh, of, of course, we're going to assume we're going to see some track records in that regard. Right. We, uh, yeah, I don't think the track's going to be that good until, man. Probably Sunday. Yeah. Wait, yeah. <laughs> Honestly. Probably until Sunday because we haven't, we've had enough people out here on Sundays, uh, few last few practice mm -hmm. days, but nothing to really make a difference. Still, so, still trying to clean out the track quite a right. bit. Right. Um, yeah, I don't think until race day we'll really see decent track conditions throughout the day. But yeah, it's gonna be the first time LA Casey's on it. The last time we were on it was a challenge of the Americas when they were here back at the beginning of the year. Yeah, if you don't count so, this earlier this month with Tri C, yeah, and, the, so, and all the early stuff was in the wet. Yeah, so everything's kind of moot to how we're, we expect to see this track. So right. I'm really excited to see um, how this track races in the dry and yeah. the tag stuff and whatnot. Yeah. So. And we got a chance to see some great racing in both the 100cc and the four strokes and whatnot. Um, at, uh, at Tri C, mm -hmm. but to your point, X30 seniors, uh, the shifter guys, you know, this is a pretty racy track. So yeah. it's going to be interesting seeing now the tracks, like you said, more cleaned off, get some rubber down. Let's we'll see what we can actually see uh, for Grande counterclockwise instead mm -hmm. of, you know, wet and kind of changing conditions. Um, this actually marks about the halfway point for them. It's round number five of their nine race season. Um, and after the brief threat of weather last month, this weekend yeah. looks to be perfectly in the clear should be all good there um, and like I said about halfway point in the championship uh, I took a brief look at the points the x30 classes are close yeah uh, junior senior masters extremely close we're talking a handful of points so those championships really really tight but obviously all up for grabs you think about it there's around five there's still five paying rounds for points with one drop so all to play for and I was of course I think looking at the uh, before drops totals. I don't think after drops, but I have to double check that. Uh, regardless, points still all up for grabs. X30 classes ridiculously close. Going to be interesting to see how things shake out this weekend. Uh, next weekend will be Tri-C round number five. <coughs> and actually, Already. We'll, yeah, <laughs> it's God. rolling. This year is rolling through. Uh, we're going to have a track change on Tuesday. So once again, the, the first drivers or the first people on the new course will be the Tri-C group. And that will be on the Nuovo layout, the last of the uh, the new sections, if you will. Uh, we've got both Classico and Classico Counter coming up next. We haven't been on those yet, so there's no track records for them. Mm. But as far as the sections of the track, the Nuovo section, the Nuovo Corner, is the last section that we have not driven on yet, that right. we have not tested, if you will. So uh, Tri-C will be doing that. We're going to have that track changed on Tuesday. And like I said, we'll be the last part uh, that is new. And I got to say, on paper, it looks pretty straightforward. Yeah. But when you go out there and you stand at the top of the hill here and you look and you start walking down the hill towards Nuovo, it doesn't look quite as straightforward. I think maybe a little bit of a later apex, a little deeper into the thing. It's going to be interesting to see how we take it. It's And this is a, a shout out to everyone that plans on practicing. Get yourself out of the autopilot. Mm. Uh because we've seen that a lot with the top of the hill corner turn five. Yes. With the uh, exit, a few people turn too early and they're still thinking about the old track. Yeah. Um, I know it's going to be an issue for me when I first go out for <laughs> testing and whatnot. But yeah, I think it's the apex is a little different and you're just going to have to train yourself to turn in that much later. And it's yeah. I think it's going to really be deceiving. That being said, you mentioned it's it looks straightforward on paper. It does. One of the ways I've always kind of described new over the new one or the old one is it's so straightforward it's tough okay. you know um that it's always been my weakest track that i've struggled on the most i think the new oval corner kind of dictates a lot of the track for me personally right but it's 
such an easy track to get into a rhythm of it's easy to get complacent with it and with that the racing is just that much harder because it's being patient yeah and there's yeah. not a lot of hard braking zones either yeah not a lot of yeah definitely not a lot of slowing get uh, slowing down going on so it's really trying to make sure you're going to make the, the one move right and make sure it pays off for you but as far as driving i think it's easy to just get lazy on the track if yeah. you will well that's gonna be like i think you made a, a huge point about the don't have the autopilot turned on mm -hmm. because what what it is basically when you when you guys go out there and you look at it the apex that was the old hairpin right. which was essentially the inner part of the nuovo turn right and we had the first part which you've got sportiva that goes this way and nuovo that keeps going well now you've got this other hairpin curve that's come out yeah so if you take the exact same line, you're going to be right into that. You're going to hit the curb, yeah. So I think what we could see is we could see some people either having to turn a little bit later, like I was saying, or have a later apex. It's deeper into the corner for you cut. Or we might just be slowing down more. You know, it could Absolutely. be that because there wasn't a ton slowing down on the old circuit with how the the apex was. So right, maybe we're just going to have to wait and see. Yeah, you know. What I'm curious to see is what's going to happen racing wise because yeah. it's now a little sharper. We're carrying a little bit less speed. Are we going to see possibly better passing opportunities in the silk? Yeah. Are you going to be able to make a move into there? Because you still have to carry the speed through silk down the back straight. Right. Or are we going to see a little more over under going on in the silk section? So the nice thing is it's our last new piece. It's all what if statements. And there's only one way to find out, and that's to go out there and cut laps. And the first horse we want to send out is Brian Williams. <laughs> he's <laughs> yeah, the, Brian Williams. He's going to be here. the first guy to uh, give us the data. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Like to see Brian chiming in here, but so yeah, the Tricy cars—they're going to be the first ones on it. We're going to uh, put the track in place on Tuesday. We're open for practice on Wednesday, and obviously we'll see Friday practice followed by race day for Tricy on uh, on Saturday. I think actually the grip—we're well, talking about the grip right now being a little interesting. The grip should actually be pretty good for for that track. Only yeah. the downhill and immediate left should be the little iffy part for, for the Nuovo section. Right. I think it'll come in pretty quick. I think it'll clean pretty quick. Um, that should be the only spot where it's a little like this. Um, everywhere else should be pretty damn good. Uh, the thing to keep in mind is Nuovo, that complex, that first part hasn't been touched since April, since we had Sportivo in place. Oh, right. So it'll be curious to see how quick that comes up. Uh, excuse me, the last part, uh, obviously next week is 4th of July, 4th of July landing on Thursday. Uh, and I'll tell you, if I know Trisha from Tri-C, she'll probably have something fun planned for the club in some yeah. way, shape, or form. Uh, if I remember correctly, I want to say they said there's a barbecue lunch uh, on Saturday. Don't right. quote me on that. Look at Tri-C Carter's uh, Facebook page. Trisha, we're still on. Tr Post Trisha it. can, yes, <laughs> confirm or deny uh, the barbecue lunch. I'm pretty damn sure that's what she said it was going to be. Mm -hmm. And like I said, uh, Trisha likes to have fun at Tri-C, and we'll do all kinds of weird and fancy stuff there it is <laughs> it's a what snow cone month that's an s oh I'm, snow cone yeah all right july is snow cone month all right so all right, we'll get snow cones there, there you go, go. Snow, <laughs> snow zones snow zones and there it is barbecue lunch so trisha nice. coming in through so you guys you got snow cones available and you got barbecue lunch available at tri -C, uh a week from saturday this week in lakc next week in tri -C, and barbecue and all kind that's that's absolutely what you should be doing the all the mechanics are going to be asleep in the afternoon it'll be all right after the, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so tri is going to be a good time they got the extra heat race to digest <laughs> that's, right. that's right uh all right so after that we will have a sprint series uh which will actually be the second weekend of uh july sprint series uh, round number seven taking to the track on july 13th and unlike practice days and kind of like what we just got done with the temp course, you're not going to see the exact track we're going to race on on practice day. Sprint series will take to the Nuo Tivo course, which is basically, yes, it starts out as Nuovo, but finishes with the Monaco hairpin on the back straightaway, uh, which is what we come from a Sportivo uh, circuit. Right. We do this kind of the same reason why we have the, uh, the bypass, bypass corner. corner. Yeah, for, for the, uh, what you would call it, for the RPMs. Uh, to try to keep those RPMs down, to make sure we don't blow up a bunch of stuff at the end of the straightaway. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have uh, the Monaco corner. So again, the only time to get your time in to get practice, the clinic, sprint series, 10 man. That's gonna be uh, the only time you can get on that course 
uh, will be Sprint Series me on uh, July 13th. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you guys jump in on that. Um, again, the only time you can get the uh, the seat time is going to be uh, on those days. And, and to be honest with you, I'm actually really looking forward to it. Novo has yeah. always been like my least favorite track. It's always been meh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's always been our uh, super speedway, right? Right. In the, in the arrive and drive carts, it's damn near flat out. I mean, when especially in the summertime, it was full throttle. The old, this is old circuit. Yeah. It was full throttle. It could potentially be full throttle from start finish all the way to the Contino entrance. Yeah. Breaking there, breaking for Long Beach. It was like a 93% on throttle time in the summer. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It was like, like we said, our super speedway, Daytona Talladega, pack racing. We don't know exactly what we're going to see with the new Nuevo I'm, corner. I'm really excited for that. But. Monaco follows it. So we're going to have a high-speed, hard-breaking scenario, and we should see a ton of passing. Yeah, it's a, it's a breaking zone, but it's that much harder than we'd have to do in Contino. Right, and, and more than we would see on Sportivo, you would think. Oh, yeah. No, definitely more speed being carried in uh, the Monaco hairpin. I I just, I'm ex I'm stoked for that circuit. <laughs> I think it's going to be a ton of fun to drive. I think the other thing that's going to be interesting, too, is if you think about how we come through Sportivo in the, in the arrive and drive carts, mm -hmm. it's right on the bottom. It's on the yeah. bottom all the way around, and then we work our way over to left. But if you think about how we used to go through Nuovo, and you open up a little bit on X, at least to the blue line, and then you cut down. So that means the defense and then open is going to be a little bit different. So I'm really, really excited to see if we make some moves, uh, if we make some moves going into either Silk coming out of the Nuovo section, like I was talking about with the competition carts, or absolutely there's going to be passing going on in that monaco hairpin well i think the other part's going to be neat too is it's a still decently uh long circuit mm -hmm. but it's you're carrying so much speed for most of it the laps are still going to go by pretty quick so i think yeah. that's going to add a neat aspect to it absolutely so that's gonna be a sprint series uh again the first time that we're going to be on the nuo tivo circuit this year and that will be uh, july 13th again uh it's going to be clinic so, uh, sprint series followed by the tin man if you are a super series a main type you got two shots of practice there that is the clinic and the tin man once we get to the third weekend of july however we're going to be back to the competition karting scene and it will be lakc on course their first and only time on nuovo as well um, obviously uh, tri c will be the next weekend uh, and they're going to be able to put the first laps down uh, excuse me but uh, i'm really really excited to see what we're going to see out of those tag and and faster stuff like the 175 shifter oh yeah the kc i mean it, the nuovo course came into being for shifters in the first place to right. get rid of a first gear corner back in the day um, that's how it came about i'm going to be interested to see how these 175s do now talking to billy at pro tour mm -hmm. he said that he was having a hell of a time getting from silk back over to the right for Contino. Oh, through the Grande circuit. That yeah. was coming out of hairpin. Yeah. Now we're carrying What what the hell are we speed. gonna see now, right? Yeah. So I'm really curious to see what's gonna happen with the 175 shifter. Obviously you got everything from micros and minis. And maybe slow down too. more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe out of the slow lift. down more. <laughs> Just a smidge. Uh, I think it's gonna be a fun challenge for everybody. I'm really looking forward to seeing how that race uh ends up being as far as the uh side to side. Again, silk versus end of the back yeah. straight away. Uh, so that should be a pretty fun deal. And uh, one of the other things, too, like we said, uh, the there's a lot of SCUSA classes at LIKC, mm -hmm. um, and a lot a lot of drivers, a lot of California drivers, going to be going and doing uh, the next uh, Pro Tour race, which is in the uh, uh, second weekend of uh, August. Okay, yeah. So basically, this next LIKC in July, I should say, you got this weekend and the July LIKC, that's going to be kind of that last tune-up. Right, the pro tour. Uh, so I'll be curious to see who comes out here and, and kind of carries that momentum from LAKC uh, round number six and carries it on to the pro tour in uh, Indiana. It's a finale, correct? Uh, for the pro tour. Yeah. 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 So they're a three weekend deal, uh, six rounds, I want to say, right. best five out of six for the pro tour. So LAKC in uh, July, more than just an LAKC event, going to be a bit of a kind of a tune up. For that pro tour and again the only shot uh that's going to be uh, at that new level course a bit of a uh, shout out here tony leon summer nats entry opens this sunday at seven so if you are a scusa type driver 
and you are hanging out watching Cal Speed Live. Yeah. <laughs> maybe awesome. The, maybe the few of you. <laughs> and make sure you guys get signed up for Summer Nats in Indiana. Going to be opening up on Sunday at 7. Uh, and obviously, if you haven't already signed up for the Monterey race, uh, the next Pro Kart race is going to be happening. Uh, actually, the same time our Sprint Series race is. The 13th. That's right. Yeah. All right, so moving on. Capping off the month of July will be the Ironman Super Series round number seven. And that is obviously uh, pretty big for the Ironman series because that is the two hour. Mm -hmm. uh, our first of two, two hour events on the schedule this year. Uh, just like Sprint Series, they will be on the Nuotivo circuit, um, which uh, like I said before, if you are gonna run Ironman, you're gonna run Super Series, you're gonna want to be here for the clinic day. It's the only time to, to you know, test in that uh, Nuovo to Monaco uh, section that we have. Um, obviously, in the two-hour drivers can either solo it uh, or have a two-driver combo. Uh, we do want to remind you guys, though, if you are going to solo it, it is a double entry. So make sure you guys get right. both of those entries. And if you're a team deal, make sure you let Sarah know who your teammate is. That's uh, pretty important as far as the Before registration the stuff set. goes. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, if you're going to solo again, two entries. If you're a team, make sure you guys get that uh, that thing done and let us know who your teammate is. This helps us out in that registration deal. Um, one of the neat things about that, too, is this is kind of where we start seeing machismo stuff come together. Yeah, this is everyone's first chance to kind of just practice the, the team dynamic again. And for those of you that are going to do it solo, it's your biggest chance to now test your endurance. Absolutely. You know, and get that aspect of it. Yeah. But yeah, this is the the catalyst, if you will, of now we're going to start thinking about machismo later on in the year right. and whatnot. And, and don't and don't forget, you're going to have machismo, uh, with uh, the eligibility and the rules and stuff like that coming out in August after the Classico GP. So this is a kind of a chance to go, who do I want as a teammate? Yeah. Who do I want to try to work with together? Um, I like what you said about the endurance. We see a lot of guys, uh, a lot of drivers go two, two and a half plus hours in the seat. It's July. It's the morning of July. Yeah. It's the, in the morning. But it's a good time to get out here, cut some laps, mm -hmm. see how you feel if you're going to solo it. Or again, how you can do taking over for another driver if you're doing a driver change. Mm -hmm. You know, figuring out that cart right in the middle of the race. So the two hour, kind of our first shot to see. Some of the things start to come together. Um, that'll be interesting to see how that whole thing works out. Um, I see Brian Armbrust. 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 Good He's on too. Brian, <laughs> Yeah, both of them. Brian Armbrust. Uh, tentative dates. There are no tentative dates. They have been set. They were set a long time ago, my friend. <laughs> and I don't know if you can see it on the calendar back there, but it is December six seven. I can see the screen right here. There's no way you can tell. But December six seven. Brian, make sure you're here. You've missed too many already. All right. Besides Iron Man, well, you know what else is going on? Super Series that same day. Mm -hmm. Super Series is going to be on the same track. And I'll tell you that one of the coolest things is the 99th Super Series. 99th Super Series over the last 10 seasons. And uh, one of the really cool things about it, we talked about Classico GP a few times. We've got a special shirt. For Classico GP. Yeah. And Classico GP has got all the winners. All 100, all 99 up to that yeah. point. So what's cool about that? We just added a name to that list. Chris Huerta got on that shirt. He wasn't on that shirt before. Right. Chris Huerta was able to win the 98th Super Series. The 99th Super Series. We'll We're going to see a new <laughs> name. Are we going to see uh, an existing name getting another one? The 99th that will be the last name that is added to that shirt on the back of that shirt. The 99 different winners prior to the 100th winner, which we will see at the Classico GP. So kind of a cool deal there. I'll definitely be making a big deal out of it in the preview. That is Super Series round number seven coming next month. Uh, pretty pretty stoked for that. Uh, I don't see a whole hell of a lot of questions, which no. is fairly typical. People just like, Seeing your shining face, yeah, so that's not, <laughs> so that's, that's nice. Spotlight out there. Uh, but hey, guys, thanks everybody for hanging out with us, um, and in general, just kind of being part of the fun out here at Cal Speed. I mean, at the end of the day, regardless if you're here for a drive and drive 
or competition karting, uh, or you here competing in LKC, Tri C, any of the different things we do, Scusa. We just appreciate you guys being part of the the Cal Speed community. I mean, mm -hmm. It's a uh, obviously it's our business what we do, but damn, do we like karting and we like having all you guys out here. So appreciate you guys being here, uh, and of course. Another big shout out to Scusa. Thank you. Uh, guys. This month's focus, absolutely. Uh, again, if you guys want to know more about uh, regional or national level competition, uh, what that kind of carding is all about, uh, head over to supercartsusa.com uh, for more information. Again, like I was talking about earlier, uh, we've got uh, the next Scusa race is the Pro Kart race, Pro Kart round number four. Uh, that is uh, July. 13, 14, that is up in Monterey. Yeah. Um, you guys can get signed up for that right now if you want to do so. And obviously the next uh, race after that on the Pro Tour schedule, we talked about it, is in Indy. That will go on sale on Sunday. Uh, once again, thanks Scusa uh, for uh, being on board for this month's Spotlight. Um, and lastly, one more reminder uh, for Clasco GP, which will be again August 10th and 11th. Really going to be a huge event for us. Kind of our the, the closest thing to grants that we possibly have anymore. Yeah. Uh, Going to be a fun weekend. Um, Saturday, we've got the clinic. We've got the sprint series. We've got 10 men. We have our first all-star race happening Saturday night. Some festivities and things like that going on, both on track, off track. Going to happen afterwards. And then, of course, on Sunday, we've got uh, round number eight of the Ironman series. And then, of course, the Clasco Grand Prix that will happen on uh, uh, Saturday. It's going to be Sunday afternoon. Yeah. The 100th. Uh, Super Series going to be going on right there. Um, and a little bit of a, a shout out. I know we've got overnight camping happening on Saturday of that weekend. Um, but I was asked by Evan Lawrence if uh, we could do overnight camping on Friday night. He's already got a decent group together. If any of you guys want to do that, please let me know. Uh, and uh, if you guys want to hang out on Friday, the more of you that want to do it, the less I got to charge you to do it. So if you want to hang out Friday night, you want to sleep here at the track Friday night, come on out let me know and we can get that thing for you again i think he's got about eight or so people evan already does so the more we have the less it will cost you just let me know so i can uh, get that dialed in yeah um and again more information on the classical gp weekend you can head over to calspeedcarding.com um but uh yeah i think that's pretty much everything the need to <laughs> seems like a lot seems like a lot yeah. hey guys appreciate you hanging out with us obviously uh, a lot to, to go over every uh, every time uh, and you guys always hang out, and we've been pretty much in the teens the entire time. Not bad, yeah. You like us. You really <laughs> like us. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, yeah, until then, for Derek Escobel, I am Mike Smith. See you guys at the track. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs>